services on this 17th, in the 17th year, yeah. pastor and church celebration, yeah. 17th year anniversary. Yeah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the land, serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah. Yeah. Come before his presence with singing. Right. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Yes. Yes. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Yes. We are his people yeah. and the sheep of his pasture. Yes. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. For the Lord is good. Yes. His mercy is everlasting yes. and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Be thankful unto him yes. and bless his name. Yes. Be thankful unto yes. him yes. and bless yes. his name. Yes. Be thankful unto him yeah. and bless yeah. his name. Yeah. Let us pray. All wise, almighty God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Creator and our Redeemer, heart fixer and mind regulator. We come this morning on the pleading terms of new mercy. Yes, yes, thanking you for another Sabbath day. Yes, thanking you for 17 years. Yes, thank you for pastor and church anniversary. Yes, thank you for allowing us to be in this warfare. Yes, thank you for choosing us to be in this warfare. And as we continue in Christ Jesus, Lord, our Savior, the Messiah, we come this morning praying for the names that are on our prayer list and our prayer board. You know, and those names that are not on the list, you know where they are. You know their condition. Merciful God, please, sir. We call on you in the name of Jesus. You're almighty. Yes, you are. You're omnipotent. You're omnipresent. You're everywhere at the same time. You're all knowing. We call on you this morning on the pleading terms of new mercy, praying for their condition. You know their circumstances. On the prayer board, thank you for hearing and answering yes, prayers. Thank you, God. Thank you, we thank you today yes, as we come to thee as humble as we know how. Yes, we pray that you will bless those who are walking the street, don't know you in a part of their sins, yes. that they will come to know you yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Bless them to turn around before it's everlasting too late. Look upon my children. Look upon my sister with an eye of pity. And when this life journey comes to an end, we too like others must quit this walk of life. Pray your blessings upon the sheep and the lambs of this flock. You know, Lord, these are the sound of my voice. Thank you, sir, Thank you, for the preservation yeah. of these 17 years. Yeah. Thank you for holding and keeping us. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. It will forgive us of all of our transgressions, yeah. whatsoever we have done, said or thought. It wasn't pleasing in your holy sight. Yeah. 
pray to serve and worship you from a pure heart. And when this life journey comes to an end, we too, like others, must quit this walk of life. Pray you receive our souls just any place in your holy kingdom where every day will be Sunday, Sabbath, will have no end. And after this manner, you said, pray our Father.
double honor to you, Dr. Scott, yes. to the officers, and to everyone here this morning. Yes. We are so blessed, Great St. John yes. Metropolitan yes. Missionary Baptist Church. Yes. Because why? Because of God. Yes. Because of how he has sustained yes. this church. Yes. When you think about the word sustain, mm -hmm. it means to be kept. Yes. And it's not based upon whatever circumstances in and out, up and down. God has just kept us. Yeah. As we can say, through it all, the Lord has been here for us. Yeah. What God has started, he will finish. Yeah. And to this day, look at us now. Yes. 17 years down yeah. the road. Yeah. But what could we have thought about when we first started out? Didn't we know? That we would be here right now. No, we right. did not. But God knew. Yes, he did. And through it all, the Lord has not only sustained us and kept us, but God Almighty has blessed us. Yeah, yeah Lord. When we first got here, the church didn't look like this. And we didn't have a parking lot. But look at God. How he has blessed us inside and out. Yeah. And look at God. How he has blessed us as a congregation yeah. and individual. Yeah. And look at God. How he has blessed our families. Yeah. God is good. Yes, he is. To those who are viewing, we are celebrating our pastors and churches. 17th year anniversary. Yeah. Our theme for this year is Great St. John Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church. Divinely chartered by God for 17 years. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, yeah. saith the Lord, thoughts of peace yeah. and not of evil, right. to give you an expected end. Yeah. We can stand on God's promises. Yeah. We are so grateful this year because especially considering the fact that God brought us through last year. Yeah. On top of everything else he did the years before. But he has kept us open. Yes. He has kept us going. He has blessed us. How many lost their job? I don't know. But God kept us. He kept us eating every day. He kept us with a shelter over our head. And everything that we needed, God provided. And I even had the opportunity to work from home. Said, look at God. Still kept me with a job. Yeah. So I, what, what do I have to do? Just worship and praise God. Yeah. Worship and praise God today. Yes, yes. So we thank God for you, Reverend Scott. Yes, yes. For your faith in God. Yes. For you always looking to God. Right. For you being an example to this church and yes. others. Yes. No matter what happened, look to God. Yes. Go to God. Yes. Talk to God. Yes. Believe in God. Yes. Worship God. Please, God, yes. stay with God, yes. love God, yes. be with God, yes. let him be your everything, build a relationship with God, yes. Yes. So whatever happens, yes. you will make it a habit yes. of going to God. Amen. Praise God and God bless. Amen. 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 Oh, we're blessed.
worry and cease. Because you're putting it in his hand. The hands of the one that made everything. That cannot fail. He won't fail. Trust God. And be blessed. Yeah. Amen. In obedience to God, double honor to our pastor, Dr. Scott. Uh, our Sunday school lesson this morning was so on time. God has a way of tying things together. He's so masterful. And I was thinking about the Sunday school lessons that don't work. Trust in God. These doors have been open through this pandemic. Trust in God. Don't worry. We came in spite of all that was going on because we trust God. And we didn't worry. Our pastor has went through a series of operations because he trusts God and he didn't worry. Whatever we were going through, God took us there and brought us back. Yeah. But he's telling us today, don't worry. Right. Don't fret. Yeah. Don't be dismayed. I will take care of you. Yeah. And we are living testimony that God will keep his word. Yeah. All that have gone on, all that we have seen in the world, condition, now look around at us and God is just blessing us. Yeah. He's blessing us everywhere we turn. You know, it doesn't take a lot to be uh, to show God blessing. We $821,000 God paid off, uh, paid off for us. You know what? We didn't work. We never stopped going to church. We never just stopped paying our tithe. We never just stopped giving our offering because we trusted God. Our Sunday school lesson telling us today, trust God. Don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about your fare. Don't worry about your, uh, your age. Don't worry about how you can worry about tomorrow, what's going to take care of tomorrow. God is in trouble. Yes. When you trust God, God will certainly take care of you. I'm young, I've been young, but now I'm old. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Yes. No, I see baby bread. God will take care of you. Yes. When you didn't have the job, God took care of you. Right. When you was, didn't have a place to stay, God took care of you. Yes. When you was walking and catching the bus, God took care of you. Yes. When there was enemies all around you and God didn't allow anybody to attack you, God will take care of you. Yes. Don't worry. Yes. He's saying to us, don't worry. And why not worry? Because hey, God is saying, I'm your help in the box. Yeah. 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 And you know what I'm doing? I'll take care of you. Yeah. Doesn't matter what is going on, I'll yeah. take care of you. Yeah. And you know, you have to get that in your spirit. Yeah. When you let that absorb in your spirit, then you'll be able to go outside yeah. and share that good news with other people. How? With a big smile. Why are you smiling and don't have a job? But God will take care of you. Why are you doing it? You just get hard and walk and you're sick. Because God will take care of you. He is my doctor. He is my Lord. We experienced that. And you know that when we had a court situation, we in the courtroom, the judge threw the whole case out. Why? Because God will take care of you. Don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about your situation. Don't worry about anything that you're confronting because God will take care of you. Amen. Good morning. In obedience to God, Pastor Dr. Scott, all that are present here today. Um, my name is Sister Scott. I teach the adult women. During this time that in, in the world, over say the last year and a half, there have been many things to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Worry about your job, worry about whether you can have a home, worry about your health, your life, yes. your family, uh, food. I mean, these are the basic needs that people have been worried about. Mm -hmm. But test your level of worry and you will know where your relationship with God is. Mm -hmm. If you're a high level worrier, that means your relationship and your trust in God is going down. Because God has already told us yeah. that if you're a wonderful woman, they're going to have difficulties and trials and tribulations right. in the world. But he says, I've overcome. Yeah. I've overcome the world. And God says, I am faithful. Whatever yes, you go through, yes, I said, yes, I will yes. not leave you and I will not forsake you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He gives us some simple uh, examples of how he takes care of the birds and yeah. the grass and the flowers and beautifies everything. Yeah. And he says, I created that. Mm -hmm. I'm taking care of that. You were my master creation when yes. I created man. Because yes. yes. I made you like me. Mm -hmm. 
And then I set you over all of that. And now you will minimize me and say, I can't take care of you. So God is bringing those little things to the forefront to let us know. If he can do all that, we know God is great. If you have any kind of touch base with nature, you know he is magnificent. Amen. He can do much more, and he has done much more with us. Right. He's teaching us because he wants us not only to trust him, but he wants us to have peace in our heart. Right. He wants to provide for us yes. so that we will give him the glory and the praise. Amen. Yes. Trust God. He is faithful. If you have not trusted him or you've gone into that worry stage, take a short example if you want to and spend some time trusting him and watch what God will do. Yes. He's proved himself over yes. the many, many yes. years, yes. individually, yes. not just for the world. Yes. If you look back on your life and you realize where you are today, what God has done, he's yes. always showing yes. himself yes. Yes. Don't let the world pull you away from him yes. and go into that worry because your life will get worse and worse. Amen. I encourage you, trust God. He's loving, Amen. he's faithful, yes. and he yes. will not fail. Amen. 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 I was thinking about this song that says, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I am blessed. I have a testimony. This morning, Sunday school lesson was titled, Why Do You Worry? And one of the scriptures was St. Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And I said, God, all these things, that mean everything that pertains to this world and our life, shall be added unto us. Well, how would it be added? Because God would do the adding. And the beautiful part about God, he knows what we need, when we need it, what time we need it, how we need it, how to receive it, what to do about it. And he takes all of that worry off of our mind when we let him do what he do best, and that is be God. He wants to be God in our lives. And so the Lord let us live every day so that we can work on these things. Because we might not get it in a day, but he's letting us live and he's teaching us every day how to trust him, Amen. how to lean on him. Yeah. And another beautiful part about God is every day yeah. he reminds yeah. us, let me help you. Yeah. Every day he put it on our thought, pray right. to me. Yeah. He never leave us alone. Because you know we get too busy yeah. and we take things upon ourselves to work it out and figure it out. Yeah. But the Lord is right there to remind us, even when we behave like that, let me help yeah. you. Right. Pray about it. Calm down. It's going to be okay. But we got to listen to God because his Holy Spirit is right there to help us every step of the way. That human nature gets out of control and start tripping. But God is here to help us every day not worry. Amen. Be moving right along. That's wonderful. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. In obedience to God, give a double honor to our pastors, the officers of the church, and to all of you here, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and to those who are live streaming with us this morning. My name is Sister Veronica George. I teach the junior mission here of our Sunday school department. Our lesson title was, Why Do You Worry? Take it from St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 25 yes. through 34. If you get anything from this lesson this morning, he said he takes care of the the, the lilies of the valley, they don't toil, they don't turn. The birds, he provides for them. He said, are you not more than these things? Where is your faith? Oh, ye of little faith. That's the question this morning. Where is your faith? It's easy to say, I've got faith. I know the Lord will provide. Oh, he's good. When you got your job and everything is going good. Until, uh-oh, February 2020, coronavirus. And then some things went tops. He's heard before us. Where is your faith? You know, God is able. Just because Jesus didn't say coronavirus in the Bible, that don't mean he don't have us coronavirus. That don't mean he don't have us in the pandemic. Wow. That don't mean he can't take care of us. God is able. Amen. Where is your faith this morning? Amen. 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 
In obedience to God, double honor, team pass to Scott, to the officers of the church, and to everyone here and to our live stream audience. My name is Sister Elaine Barfield, and I teach the youth women's class. One point that I want to bring out from the lesson, I thank God that he always takes good care of us. Yes. And he's been taking good care of us. Yes. And so when we think about all the things that God has done for us, he's been really good. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when we worry, we can't think about how good God's been to us. Why? Because instead of our minds being on praising God, it's on worrying. Yes. So instead of us giving God thanks, Lord, thank you. You blessed me to see another day. Thank you, God. You woke me up. You gave me strength in my body. Let me be in my right mind. Bless me with food to eat. No, I'm worried. Okay? Thank you, God, for this day. No. -uh. My back hurt. Oh, the sun is shining. Oh, it's too hot. Our mind isn't on praising God. It's on worrying. So when we worry, we don't put God first. We don't tell God thank you. We always have a reason to praise God. So don't worry. Praise God. Amen. In obedience to God, we you the honor pastor to the officers of the church, to everyone here. I teach, my name is Sister Patrice Ely, and I teach the juniors class, and our lesson is entitled, Why Worry? Um, one of my points is, God does not want us to worry about anything. He wants us to give it over to him. Um, uh, God knows what we need and the things that we lack. He wants us to trust in him and depend on him. God is so great that he can take care of everything. Um, he can take care of all of us all at the same time. So trust and depend on God. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Sister Edwina Smith, and I am the teacher for the primary class and the beginner's class. In obedience to God, double honor to you, Dr. Scott, the officers of the church, and everyone present and listening. Our Sunday school lesson was, why worry? And you may wonder, is that a lesson for children eight and under? Yes, it is. Because we're in a society that promotes worry. It promotes stress. But the lesson that was brought out today is, we serve a God who is big. Yeah. Not just big, he's big, big. Yeah. We know God is big because the scripture says he takes care of the fowl. That's the birds yeah. in the air. Yeah. They are well fed and well taken care of. And guess what? They don't work. Right. He also said that God arrayed the flowers. Yeah. He picked all the colors. Not just the flowers in your yard, but all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. And if God can take care of and pick all the colors of all the flowers all over the world. And God can take care of the birds all over the world. It's not just one species, but all the species. And they don't work. What about us? Yes. God loves us so much that he takes care of us. And what Jesus told us in St. Matthew chapter 6 is, don't worry. Yeah. That's for kids, that's for grown-ups, that's for everyone. Yeah. Don't worry. Why? Because God loves us and he promised yeah. that this great, big, big God will take care of us. Yeah. So don't worry. don't worry. Trust God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Our first selection by the specials, Lord Keep Me Day by Day, followed by God is on our side by the choirs. When I rose this morning, All right. soloist Sister Patrice Ely, there's not a friend. Soloist Sister Veronica George and Sister Elaine Barkin. Amen. Amen. On this blessed day, yeah. Yeah. second day of our anniversary, yeah. Yeah. I would just like for the specials, you could do a duality, two songs, but I'd like you to just sing a verse or two of the Negro anthem. Because it's 
very spiritual. If you listen to the words, how he says, lest we forget where, where God brought us. God have brought this church. God have brought us. God have brought us down through the centuries. And we are part of his church. We are part of the body of Christ. That's a great blessing to be ostracized. You don't right. yeah. Yeah. as a people. Yeah. But God, through his church, yeah. brought us in. Yeah. Amen. We're just a branch and a conduit yeah. right now. Yeah. This is the station where souls can come and yeah. Yeah, go right. home to meet the Lord. Yeah. So I, I don't want to ever forget where we have come from. Yeah. The specials will come now with the Negro. And I, I know they sing it at these. They've asked for it to be sung at these stadiums now. But the reality of it is very spiritual. Yes, it is. Where God brought us. You can, you can say God, but you got to live it. Amen. Many don't understand this song of the, the toil and the struggles and the many things that our great great ancestors went through. Yeah, yeah. Where God brought us. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 Amen.
said the Lord is here. Yes. Yes. Yes.
knows what prayer can do. Amen. Amen. There's not a friend like Jesus. So Lewis, Sister Veronica George, and Sister Elaine Barfield will be leading the choir. Telling the world there's not a friend like Jesus. So many lose hope because they put their friendship in the wrong person, in the wrong place, and in the wrong things. But Jesus will never let you down. Sing good.
15. Just time to assess where God has brought you from. We haven't come to the end of the line until He said, Well done. That's what we want to hear Him say. Well done. And one thing about the church, He's coming soon. I can say, He coming soon. Yeah. All right. All right. He's coming soon. Yeah. Working yeah. and waiting. Yeah. Oh, come there's still room. Yeah. Right. No man knows the hour yeah. when we'll see the groom. So coming for his bride, he's coming soon. Yes, uh, 
to keep the faith. To keep the faith. That's, that's not the subject, but it's along those lines. Taken from Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 6, which says, But without faith, it is impossible yes. to please him. Yes. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, yes. and that he is a rewarder yes. of them that diligently seek him. Yes. You can't haphazardly give him uh, part-time service and wow. part-time amen. Wow. Just because you're here, yes. you know, that don't cut the mustard, so to speak. Right. You got to diligently, yes. amen, yes. put yourself in praise mode, mode yes. to give, to get a reward. See, he don't, he wants the best. Because yes. he give, he don't give you no handouts. No. No. The subject this morning, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Yeah. Now, I call on my daughter, Denise, who is incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she will be there for, I, I pray, blessings upon her. Yeah. She's in the facility in Texas uh, where we sit so much money, over $13,000. Uh, what's the name of that facility? Gatesville. Correctionals. She's there, and let me tell you, there's a whole lot of saints locked up. They may be physically incapacitated, physically locked up, but they're free in their hearts and their souls. Well, we got a whole lot out of physically free, but absolutely bound with those demonic spirits. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you just can't start judging people. Yeah, I'll be writing her. There's others that I write. I have over 5,000 letters from prisoners, yeah. over 5,000. This message is for you today yeah. who have been pers persevering, persevering yeah. and God has been keeping you yeah. these yeah. past years. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's just a continuation from under the ministry of our late pastor, the Dr. C.J. Anderson. He informed me that he was passing me the baton. Amen. And one day I have to pass it to somebody else until the Lord says, uh, blow the trumpet. You may be seated. As we were in the office of my late pastor, the Reverend Dr. C.J. Anderson during his lifetime, while sitting in his office chair, all right, all right. behind his desk, he said, God must be pleased yes. at all times. Yes. This, let, this let me know or knew right then and there that every step in life is absolutely important. Yes. Absolutely important. Should be a step in faith in God. Oh, yeah. 
so many are walking by sight now. It is certainly it certainly confirms that is Dr. Anderson's profound statement in what St. Paul, the apostle, teaches the church in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and verse seven. Are you listening? Amen. This is for you, great St. John. Amen. For we walk by faith, Amen. not by sight. Yes. And in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, have given us mottos who walked by faith and not by sight. Now, you should sit down and read that whole chapter and critically understand each character in that chapter. Some call it a hallmark of faith. You should sit down and seriously take the time and study each biblical character who walked by faith in that chapter and see the rewards of life where they obtain or will obtain and you will be uplifted. The first biblical Hall of Fame listed is Abel. And I may just dwell on this throughout the message. As I read into the faith of Abel and Cain and the lack of Cain's faith, it can easily refer to salaries earned today. How do we distribute our monies today? By when we read about Abel and Cain. Nobody is going to give, loan, pay anybody if there is not a trust somewhere in the business transaction. Shall I repeat that? Nobody, okay, who you are, is going to give or loan or pay anybody if there is not a trust somewhere in the business transaction. Somebody's going to give, uh, give you a car or loan your car. These days, on just, I'll pay you on every Monday. Uh-uh. They go, you got to go into a business transaction. Signing papers. Cain did not trust God to the point to give him the best that the Lord had poured blessings that he would be blessed by God. He didn't believe that. Uh, he didn't have that trust that the Lord God, Lord God would pour blessings upon him. If I will not pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. He didn't believe that. So he gave him what he wanted. But it said Cain walked by faith and gave unto the Lord an unaccepted offering. He didn't pay all of his, uh, let's bring it up today, on his time. And offerings. Right. Tithes and offerings go together. Yes. Just not only tithes, but tithes and offerings. O F F E R I N G S. Cain's unacceptable offering uh, to the Lord was unrighteous. When you don't pay your tithes and offerings, you, well, we get to that. It's unrighteous. Here the Lord God had provided for him to be a productive farmer. 
and he was not showing uh, by faith to the Lord God that he was appreciative of what God was doing for him. We forget that God has provided for us. As I heard one of the speakers this morning, we are in need. We are needy people. And God has blessed us with all of our needs. He's blessed you with food on your table. He's blessed you with shoes on your feet. He's blessed you with uh, dresses and suits on your, on your clothing. He's blessed you with socks. Hair pins. He's blessed you. Whatever you He's blessed you. And you mean to tell me you can't show God appreciative miss by giving him his tights? Paying him his tights. And offering? He did not honor, talking about Cain, the Lord by faith, the more excellent sacrifice as Abel did and lost, Cain lost his blessings. Yes. Then Cain being guilty of unrighteousness guilty of being wrong to before the Lord because he was angry with Abel for doing the right thing by faith in offering up all of his substance in a more excellent sacrifice Cain killed his brother people will talk against you because you're paying your tithes and offerings and you're being blessed. And they're wondering, I got two jobs. I, I, don't, I can't make ends meet. I'm out here and I got this money coming in and I just can't keep money. You will never keep money. You will always be have your, what they call nose to the grind because you're not doing God right. He murdered his brother Abel. Family members, associates, employers, colleagues, church members will grumble and mistreat the Lord in their not like of giving of tithes and offerings. And they will leave the church grumbling. Mm -hmm. One man left the church saying that you had to pay to go and be a part of this church. I don't even pay. I'm the pastor. Y'all don't charge me, do you? No. no. Do you? No. I don't charge you, do I? No. He was angry because he had to pay his tithes and offering. He wasn't brought, that's the Cain spirit he had. By leaving the church and saying that you got to pay this thing. God said tithes and offerings. Nowhere did Marie Scott, Pastor Scott, whoever, however way you want to frame it, say it, pay your tithes and offerings. I didn't know how to pay tithes and offerings until I was taught by the land of God. And boy, I'm glad I did get taught. And boy, I'm glad I, I'm just saying that this expression. I'm glad, brothers and sisters, that I do pay my tithes. Blessing, no, I just enjoy God's blessings. Yes, I am. I got a peace of mind. Well, I just feel good. Yes, I do. Paying your tithes and offerings, he opens up doors. Well, for one thing, it is not lawful before God and governments to charge anybody to worship in church. God wouldn't be pleased. 
to charge people to come in. That's a lie. Amen. Satan want to discourage people yes. to go where they can be blessed. Amen. Be saved. Be blessed. Yes. Be blessed in their life and have their prayers answered. Yes. Yes. And put out lies on the church. I know what's thing. Before you get your check, Uncle Sam already got his. Right. But God leave it up to you. Amen. By faith Amen. to pay your tithes and give offerings. Yes. Thank God for this membership. Yes. I'm coming to it. We paid off an eight hundred and twenty-one thousand dollar loan. Yes. Forty members sacrificing, excellent sacrifice, paying yes. our tithes and offerings. We didn't go outside to any other agencies. No. But God yeah. touched the heart. Yeah. 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 Nobody lost the home, no. as I heard the president say. No. Nobody lost the As a matter of fact, you got better cars. Yeah. The lot was almost empty out there. Now it's full. Some got jobs. Yeah. You mean to tell me you're not going to when the Lord blesses you, to uh, when your salary goes up, you're not going to pay on the gross? Right. Not on the net, on the gross. Right. Right. See, you are a robber. Yeah. Well, for one thing, it is not lawful before God and governments to charge anybody to worship. Jesus paid it all yeah. on Mount Calvary. Nobody is charged to enter these church doors. And it should not ever take place in any church door. There are no special paid seating places in the church. There may be designated for the, uh, the deacons and, and and the mothers, but nobody have any business saying jump out of my seat. <laughs> this is a public yeah. membership. Yeah. You can come and sit wherever you want, yeah. where all members are seated. Yeah. And if the member get there late, they get got to find them another seat. No charge. There is no monetary charge by this pastor to preach the gospel. Yeah. I don't charge. No, no, no. Some try to give me money. I, no, 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 no. God takes care of me. Yeah. Freely he received. Freely he gave. Some who were blessed when I prayed for them tried to pay me. I said, no, no, mm -mm, I don't take that. Put it in the offering. That's right. That's right. No, I refuse. Some try and pay me for praying for them. I don't take no. God has allowed me to have faith in him to pray with power that you may get well. Amen. And be blessed. I don't charge you for that. Some I pray for, mm -hmm. and they don't get better. That's not my fault. No. Jesus says, do you believe it that I could do these things? All right. Yes, I, I, I pay. Listen, I pay my tithes yeah. and give my offerings yeah. by faith. And the Lord keeps his holy word. Yeah. I'm talking about he opened up the window yeah. of heaven. Yeah. He opens up the windows of heaven and pours me out a blessing yeah. that I have to give shoes away. Right. I give suits away. Right. We got cars in the family. Everybody got a car. 
we talked yes. about a blessing. Yes. Uh, we have our separate automobiles, but we got everybody is uh, mobiling down the highway. Wow. A blessed five room, Sister Scott and I, uh -huh. have a blessed five room home yeah. with only where she and I are living. Do you understand? Yeah. We got five rooms. Yeah. Uh, we can sleep in any, every room. Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Five rooms. We have one bedroom, but we don't see the bedroom. I'm trying to tell you the blessings. We have cell phones. Everybody got a cell phone in the house. TVs. We got, I, I don't know. Doesn't matter what room you in, you can go ahead and turn it on. These three rooms. We have insurance. We have medical plan. I'm trying to change the blessing. Some are not awake yet to what God is doing to them. As the late James Cleveland used to sing, running down the street with a loaf of bread crying. Got a loaf of bread in there crying like a baby. Got a loaf of bread under there. Medical plans. We got dental plan insurance. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Even if you don't use it, you should. Daily food on the table. Thank God for the table. He provided that for you. What about that refrigerator that holds your food? What about that, that oven and that stove and that microwave? He provided for you. What are you talking about? God is not blessing. Wake up. God is blessing you. What about the voice you have to talk with? What about the mind to think with? What about the eyes to see with? He's blessing you. What are you crying for? Talking to you, St. John. You don't sit on the floor at home. You got a couch to got furniture. In. Yes, you have. You don't sleep on the floor in a, in a duffel bag. You got beds to sleep in. And comfortable beds in that. One bed don't fit you, you go to another. When you please God by faith, with an able sacrificial offering, tithes and offerings, it is acceptable before God. But the king's offering of partial tithing, tips of offerings, because they see in their minds uh, the king's are, it is too much money. 10% of your gross is too much money. A uh, 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 gross of your earnings is too much and, and offerings. But they turn around uh, and, and they pay $1,500 for the appointment that God have blessed them. Uh, they pay their rent. They don't own it. They just pay $1,500. Rent. They paid three hundred dollars car note. Right, right. They paid five hundred dollars grocery bills. Right. Okay. And this, I don't go grocery where you eat every day. I know you eat more than twenty five dollars worth too. You multiply that, see what it comes up to right, right. per month. Right. Might be over five hundred. Sixty to seventy dollars per month for your cell phone. $100 a month for your gasoline bill. $50 to $60 to go to the football or basketball or baseball game tickets. Spending daily $10 to $15 at one of the fast food places besides the other places you go. And yet, God only requires 10%. Not 30% taxes, but 
10% yes. tax. Yes. Not 40%, not 50%. No. Right. 10%. Yes. That he has provided for you to do all of the above material things. Mm -hmm. Pay your house loan. Yes. And you don't want to put him at the top of the list who's provided for you. They wonder, people wonder why they cannot get ahead. That because they're doing it the Cain's way by no faith. The prophet Malachi says in the third chapter and verse 9, ye are cursed with a curse. Now, for ye have robbed me, yeah. even this whole nation. Yeah. Right. Is this why we have had this plague yeah. throughout America? Yeah. Because the church, this nation is robbing God. Yeah. God is going to collect one way or the other. You don't collect by you having a flat tire. You don't collect by you losing your job. You don't collect with hospital bills. He don't collect. One day he, you gonna he's gonna collect. He'll collect by death. You don't hear what I'm saying. Where is your amen this morning? Is yes, uh, this plague has swept across this not only nation but world. Uh, is this why we have had the plague because of being a robber? The answer is yes. Malachi 3 9 and 10 says, Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me. Even this whole nation bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive you. Some who used to attend church. Uh -huh. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Some who used to attend church regularly yeah. right. are no longer attending church. Right. Since the church doors closed yeah. during this pandemic, right. during this plague, right. right. uh, they're not attending anymore. Nor are they paying their uh, honest tithes anymore and offerings. He are cursed with a curse, even his whole nation. When Christians don't pay their tithes, uh, they are under a godly cane rejection. Some saying, I'm not going back to church anymore. And, and I don't need, I don't want to go into that this morning, but they don't give, they don't pay their tithes, no offerings. Amen. How are you going to keep the doors, uh, the lights on? Pay your other expenses. Our late and very faithful deacon, Morris Burns, used to encourage the church when he spoke on the tithing talks on Sunday morning. He would say that he did, quote, he didn't want to know about the curse. He said, I don't want to know. I don't want to be under a curse. Because you don't know how God is going to come. You don't know how he's going to allow anybody in their right mind do not want 
to be under any curse. Amen. But when you do not pay your tithes and offerings, you are under a curse. With a curse, nothing goes right. Talking to you this morning, yeah. Yeah. When you do not buy faith, pay your honest tithes. Yes. Not on the net, but the gross yeah. of what monetary sources that you are receiving. You are robbing God. Yeah. He didn't say you robbing the preacher. Oh, yeah. Always make blame it on the preacher talking about him. Getting all the money. Well, if you're robbing God, how can the preacher get money? If you're robbing God, you know the preacher. When a person don't rob God, they go somehow take care of their ministry. God's gonna make it possible. But when you rob God, you you give it less anyway. You're not robbing me. You robbing God. Nowhere in that book says I'm being robbed. God is being robbed. You are cursed with a curse. I am the pastor. Yes, I'm the pastor. And I certainly do pay my tithes and offerings. I do. Because I found the secret of God's blessings. I think Pastor told me, he said, not that. I'm always been there because he, he's a part of my life. He told me one day, he said, you will always be blessed. Because you like me, I, I'm a giver. And God will answer your prayers quick. Some hold back. They wait some time to see what people are going to say when they pay their tax. I don't do that for nothing. Before they ever give me, I say, take out the tax. When my check comes uh, from the uh, government, take out my tax. Cain did not please the Lord. Didn't please the Lord God, and he was not blessed like his brother Abel, who walked by faith and gave a more excellent sacrifice offering. It pleased the Lord God, and, and Abel was blessed. He, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, is the hallmark of biblical patriarchs who please God by faith. Yeah. We're talking about Enos who walked with God. Yeah. And God took him, he translated him, he walked away. Uh, Enos, uh, he walked with God. Yeah. God took him. Yeah. Enos walked away from the world and worldly pleasures right. with the Lord God. Yeah. By faith, Enos walked with the Lord God away from uh, what we consider good times. Right. All that is in the world. Yes. Yes. The lust of the flesh. Right. The lust of the eyes. Right. And the pride of life. Uh -huh. He walked away from that. Yes. yes. Oh, he, right. he was translated. Uh -huh. And God took him. Yes. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 24 through 26 says... By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You only, only are here for a temporary time. Yes, yes. You, we're not going to live forever. No. So please God yes. so that you can live forever. Yes. Well, you're not listening to us. Yes. 
The Bible says, esteeming, Moses, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Abraham pleased God by faith. Are you listening? Sarah had a baby, Isaac. By faith. She pleased God. Isaac pleased God. Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, pleased God. He kept his promise. He said, if you would keep me when I come back, I will give you 10% of all what I earn. He kept his word. He paid his tithes and all. Jacob, Israel, pleased God. Yes. Joseph, by faith, yes. pleased God. Yes. David, by faith, pleased God. Yes. Samuel, through faith, pleased God. Yes. Right. Rahab, the harlot, yes. pleased God. Yes. By faith. Gideon, pleased God. Yes. Barak, pleased God. Yes. Samson, pleased God. Japheth, right. pleased God. Oh, God, thank you for these witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. By faith. Yeah. Verses 33 through 37 says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Yeah. Waxed valiant in fight. Yeah. Turned to flight the uh, armies of the aliens. Yeah. Women received their dead raised to life again. Yeah. And others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better uh, resurrection. Yeah. And others had trial of cruel mockings yeah. and scourging, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Yeah. They were stoned. Yeah. They were sawn asunder, yeah. were tempted, Torching. were slain with the sword. Yeah. They wandered about in sheep's skins and goat skins being destitute afflicted tormented verses 39 through 40 says and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the price God having provided some better thing for us uh, that they without us should not be made perfect. So they're going home, but they can't crown it. As my late pastor would say, they can't crown Jesus until we get there. From the beginning of time, the Lord God has not left himself without a witness. Time will not allow us to go from generation to generation of those by faith or through faith were, moved, were more than conquerors. I would be safe to say whether by, by or through faith, faith is the conduit, fruit of the spirit that pleases God. And rewards us by having faith. Yeah. He answers. He he answers our prayers. Yeah. He blesses yeah. us by faith. Yeah. When we have in Him, yeah. we are overcomers yeah. by faith yeah. Yeah. and through faith. Yeah. Uh, the Apostle John says in the fifth chapter, verse four and five, right. for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and trouble the water. Whosoever 
Then first after the troubling of the water stepped in, they were healed. Yeah. It was by faith. Yeah. All those old patriots. Yeah. I'm just about this. All, right, all, right. all those old patriots and all those by and through faith have come and finished their course. They have run with patience their life's faith race. Yes, St. Paul in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 7 and 8 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not uh, to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Yes. Great St. John. Yes. This is our 17th year. Yes. Pastor and church's anniversary. Yes. It has been only by and through faith yes. we continue on our journey from 1909 Market Street, yes. Oakland, California, yes. to our present address, 9. 85 53rd Street. By faith, we have sojourned uh, back in, in 2014, I think it was, two years at the Buttercup. We sojourned by faith for two years at the Buttercup restaurant. For Sunday school, yes. Baptist Training Union, yes. Yes. Wednesday evening Bible study, yes. Friday evening choirs and ushers program, yes. and other activities we had. Yes. By, faith, By faith, for two years we sojourned in Richmond, California. By, at the Monterey Pines yes. Community Center yes. for morning services. Yes. Yes. Then at the House of Truth, uh, our presently owned worship facility, yes. Yes. we were there at night yes. Yes. by faith. Yes. Yes. By faith. Yes. Yes. We paid this Mark it, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. In six years yeah. Yeah. and nine months, yeah. Yeah. which was a 40 year yeah. long. Yeah. Yeah. By faith, yeah. when the judgment was tacked on the door of $290,000, yeah. yeah. we went to court. By faith. Uh -huh. And while the first time we went there, we did not receive pleasant news. Right. But I went back after talking with the lawyer. He suggested so much. But I went to God in my praying on in my praying place at home. And he informed me to give him what he wanted. Give him what he wanted. The Bible says if you want your coat, give him your cloak. I said, yes, Lord. He said, you step back and let me handle this. By faith, all of those who went to the courtroom with me stand on their feet. We know Deacon Buckley has gone on home. Amen. Amen. Dicker Buckley was with us. Yes. By faith, while we sat in the courtroom, and 
uh, the procedure had taken place. The joint judge had come in and the lawyer had gone up and the other side uh, attorney was absent in another court. And our attorney went up and tried to plead for the other attorney and the judge bawled him out for about 40 minutes while I sat there and continued to write my dissertation, my doctoral dissertation. At the conclusion of the first uh, bawling out by the judge to our lawyer, he said, now you go tell him to get his butt over here. He said, I spent eight hours going through this court's uh, procedure on this case. And uh, he got, uh, so to speak, nerve to be in somebody else's court to minimize my court. He slammed the book and said, after lunch, I want it here. He walked out. We just sat there. As God was moving, yeah, yeah, yeah. our attorney went and got the lawyer, yeah. and he, uh, the other side attorney, the judge, he gave him, it was almost like a shellacking up one side, yeah. down the other side, right. saying, who do you think you are, so to speak, right. for you to give orders to go and send word to my court? After about an hour, I would say, of him blasting that attorney out, he said, the court finds this, I'm dismissing this. Start all over. He threw the 290,000 judgment out. He said, start all over. The Lord set it up. It didn't start at 290,000. We set the tone at 150,000 and we paid it off. God was our judge by faith. John was our attorney by faith. God, we paid it off. We paid it off. God is the one who has brought us to 17 years. Yes, he has. God. He got us standing on the walls of time. Saying to the world, by faith, he lives. Jesus lives. By faith, we know we are saved because we love the brethren. God is our keeper. I know this because he's kept me. He's kept me. Go back in your mind during the dangers of your life. By faith, he kept you. By faith, he holds you. By faith, he saved you. St. John, this is not the end. Because God has brought us. We're building on our faith. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And by faith, we don't worry about it. God will take care of us. God will take us home. One day, he's going to appear. He's going to appear in the, in the sky. The dead will rise first. I don't know where we'll be, but somewhere I'll be listening. You don't have to say Maurice. You don't have to say doctor, but server. Come on, server. We come by faith. 
God will call us. He said he'll never leave us. And he hasn't left us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for these patriots. Yeah. We want to leave the legacy that this church no doubt about it, our history tells it. Yes. By faith, yes. by faith, God established this church. Yes. By faith, yes, He did. Yes. 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 Let us all stand. All wise, Almighty God. You have brought us these 17 years. You have kept us these 17 years. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. You is our guide. And Master, I pray your blessings upon these faithful members, these sheep of the Lamb. I pray that you will bless them in their bodies, in their minds. Pray that you will hold, keep us until that great day. Bless those who are looking on who can't make it out, but bless them. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, rest rooted and abide with us until we come together again this afternoon, this evening. And the sweet, sweet Spirit Turn to one another. Tell them I love you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. And I.